Well, in the last video, I was talking about a pip that Kaz Equipment was doing on this corn planter. We'll just kind of describe what they're doing to it. We backed it in, unfolded it partially, and then unhooked the tractor. So I got to get the tractor hooked back onto it now. They've got two rows left to do. And what they are doing with this PIP, which PIP stands for Product Improvement Program or something like that. But what they're doing to this, if you recall last year, we ended up putting a, um, oh, they call it a puck planner upgrade kit into it. And it was basically everything from the toolbar back complete brand new row unit new corn hoppers hydraulic downforce um pneumatic row cleaners we put a fertilizer system on it as well what they're doing with this product improvement whatever is they are replacing the sensor this is the little t-handle unit that goes down in on the closing wheels right here and there's a sensor on that and each row senses how much downforce that it has either going to it or how much downforce it's actually reading these units here they've had some problems with connections and whatever like that and it's replacing the whole wire harness for each row unit. And it is quite a nice improvement over just replacing this actual plug itself, which is right here. They are a mongrel to get apart. So they've changed that round plug, which is, where the heck is it here? This guy here. This is just a five pin connector, which will not unplug after it's got a couple years worth of time on it. This is basically the same uh, type setup that the old system had on it. And they've changed that connector over to a three pin connector right here. That's a lot better. There's probably more than a thousand dollars Per row that they're putting uh, into uh, this kit here so we're gonna go ahead and get hooked on to this corn planter I should not have to unhook this tractor again until we're done planting corn it is August or April 27th and we'll probably start planting corn in three or four days it's kind of cold right now we've been getting some rain showers and I do have to do a few things to that fuel trailer. So we're gonna get this corn planter hooked up. Then we're gonna roll into doing a few things to the fuel trailer. So we'll join back up with you in a few minutes here. Well, we are down here to the fuel trailer. If you look up on the hill up there, the corn planter is outside. We've got that done. Now we're gonna screw around with this. We've got a couple of things to do to it not much but one thing that i want to do to it is i want to put a filter assembly on it so that the uh, fuel coming out of the tank can be filtered before it goes into a tractor and we're going to have to take this up to the shop i need like maybe a three or a four inch nipple to come out of this pump here hook our filter head up we'll have a just a regular spin on filter right there and the other thing I want to do too is I want to put a swivel assembly on this hose just so that when this hose or this nozzle is in the tank of the tractor the hose isn't flexing down it, it could kind of naturally fall in the position that it needs to be in now we kind of did a brief walk around of this trailer when we left chuck's place the other night if you didn't catch that video it was the video before this one here and we did a walk around of it now this uh 
toolbox that's on the back of it it doesn't come on the trailer but his conversions that he does with the fuel oil tankers um converting them into a manure tanker some of them have uh toolboxes on them and whatever and that's what this here is it's a toolbox off of an old tankers just kind of refurbished and he threw it on uh the back of this trailer now what we'll be able to use this for is we can put grease in it oil maybe i could shove my toolbox in there you know just makeshift tools and and whatever uh like that uh the other thing that this trailer also has on it we kind of described it in the last video is it has a death tank on the front of it uh this death tank is a 12 volt has a 12 volt pump on it it is powered from a battery that's in that box right there and then that battery is charged with the solar panel um in case i didn't mention this pump that's on this uh tank is a gas engine uh pump i don't know what the gallons per minute is it's probably 20 to 25 gallons a minute um we'll get into that here in a little bit i do not know how much this tank holds it's got to probably hold maybe 150 gallons of death um that'll be handy for uh just the equipment that we are accumulating now that has diesel exhaust fluid and we'll be able to uh of course have that uh with us this uh fuel tank holds 900 and some odd gallons 990 gallons or something like that and it should serve us well it's it's a little bigger than it needs to be but um instead of just bringing a day's worth of fuel we can bring two days worth of fuel with us the other trailer that we have has a 300 gallon tank on it and some days 300 gallons isn't enough other days 300 gallons is not enough to do two days so you you find yourself bringing fuel back with you or whatever uh, being that this has an adequate amount of capacity to it we could take this to a location and leave it there for a couple of days and not have to worry about um, yanking it home and putting more miles on it than we need to put on it this uh, trailer has brakes on both axles the axles have a carrying capacity of seven thousand pounds now you might be saying wow that's uh that's a lot <laughs> well that's per axle so this trailer has a carrying capacity of fourteen thousand pounds uh we will be right around eight nine thousand pounds i don't know what the trailer weighs we're gonna weigh it here in a minute the f-350 weighs 7500 pounds the way it sits right now that has no fuel in the tank uh, i've got some tools in the back not much but we're running right around uh 7500 pounds now this has got a this has a two and five sixteenths ball coupler on it and i had this uh combination panel hook uh assembly i've had it for a long time it has a two and five sixteenths ball on it and of course it is also capable of uh, pulling a pennel hook trailer i got out to chuck's place the other night this damn thing didn't work uh we'll kind of briefly show you how we ran into that problem so i'm going to try to demonstrate this so you back in here and it doesn't couple into it we had to back in sideways in order to get <clears throat> it to work so i ended up having to get uh this coupler assembly here which is a little different that's going to work for what we need to do um 
I like the idea of having a combination ball unit so that we can pull the big air compressor around that has a pinnel hook ring on it. The Seed Tender trailer has the same coupler here as this trailer and we need to take these bolts out and move uh, these down so that we get this trailer to uh, ride level. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to get hooked up to it. I do need to take this up to uh, the shop to put the filter head on and onto it because I need like a, a four inch nipple here to get this filter out here so that we can um, have the ability to get that filter on and off. So we'll go ahead and get hooked up to it and um, get our filter head on there and we also have a uh, swivel here that we're going to put on the hose so let's go ahead and get things set up here well we've got this trailer hooked up like i was saying we were 7500 pounds without the trailer now we're going to Go ahead and pull on the scale here. We'll get a gross vehicle weight, gross combination vehicle weight. So we are 11,200, yeah, 11,200 pounds. So we are, uh, what is that? 40, 38 or 900 pounds. So we'll go ahead and swing around to the fuel tank here and we'll start filling it with fuel. Well, we've got this thing all ready to go. We've got it full of fuel. I have not filled the def tank yet. I went around, aired all the tires up to 80 PSI, and we have torqued the wheels. So we ended up getting the filter head on here. I'd like to put a gauge on here as well, and then we'll be able to shorten this hose up. And I also went ahead and put a swivel end on the hose, just so that when this nozzle's in a fuel tank, the hose is not trying to bend on a 45 degree angle so we've got some fluids in this cabinet here hydraulic oil engine oil engine coolant and a gas can of course because once this pump runs out of gas we're not pumping fuel are we so we're going to take these guys to the field we're going to run across the scale the truck weighs 7500 i forgot what it weighs with the empty fuel trailer but we're gonna run across the scale with the loaded fuel trailer and then we'll have to weigh it again at another point once we get def loaded into uh, that tank there. The one thing that I don't really like about this tank is the fill port. The fill port being in the center of the tank, you've gotta climb up over the fender to fill it they should have put the fill port either on one side or the other so we might as well go ahead and get you guys to the field and uh we'll see if this ford can handle it yeah, yeah. oh we got a gale skid steer here okay so we will roll up onto the scale here and get a combination weight of this whole unit here. So we are 18,500 pounds gross weight. And you know what I'm gonna do to do right now is I'm going to leave the trailer on the scale and we'll try to figure out how much tongue weight that this is putting on the truck so we are i should be able to do the math we are ten thousand the 
the trailer is 10,000 pounds but we've got some tongue on the truck so I think I'm just going to put the jack down and um, figure it out that way so 7,500 that means there's 2,500 pounds on the hitch of the truck which doesn't sound correct but that might be so bear with me for a second here all right so we have the jack down on the scale and it weighs 10.6 full of fuel minus def i don't remember what the trailer weighed uh when we went across empty uh, i'll have to go back to the video and figure that out so we'll go ahead and crank this down i don't remember what i weighed uh when it was still hooked to the truck so We'll go ahead and crank this down, and then we'll roll on out of here. Well, it's only got about 100 pounds on the, uh, yeah. Hmm. It's only got about 100 pounds on the drawbar. It's 10.4. So, um, yeah, that's pretty good. Pretty well balanced. Okay, now we can roll out. I had a bad episode of uh, my math skills there, trying to think out loud. When I originally pulled the truck off the scale, for whatever reason, I was coming up with 2,500 pounds on the drawbar. But that's, uh, that's a poor math skill. So in case you're wondering what the Gale Skid Steer is here for, that is a rental unit that we are going to use for 30 days picking stones. All right, so we are on location here. Now, on the bottom side of this tank here, there is a ball valve. So I closed this last night while it was filling with fuel. And I was screwing around with putting a filter on or whatever. So we better open that up. And then we'll go ahead and start the pump. And we'll start filling these tractors up and looking the plows over here. Now, the nice thing about this 50 foot reel is this would almost reach over to that tractor without having to move anything. So, we'll go ahead and get these full and uh, then we're going to run up to where they're hauling manure and we're going to fill the uh, manure tractors up with fuel and then we'll get back to the farm. I've got to do a few things and then I want to get this death tank filled as well. So we might as well go ahead and get things looked over here, right? I'll go ahead and start greasing. So. All right, so this one is full. And we're not sure if we have enough hose to get over to that other tractor. But we're going to go ahead and try. 
just to see if it works. Try that, it might not be enough. You got enough. Well, that's pretty handy. Um, normally, they would park a little closer together, but it's handy to know that you have that kind of, uh, oh, that kind of length there. It works handy if you had like multiple pieces all together, you just pull up hose down through everything now we probably should have a cone with us so that nobody drives over this hose somebody comes flying in here and they end up driving over the top of it that wouldn't be a good thing so we've got to run the grease gun around this 13 shank plow yet and then we'll roll on out of here what do you got loose u-bolts Oh, uh, yeah, all right. All right, Alex's tractor is full. So we'll go ahead and throttle this down, shut it off, and then we'll let the hose wind itself back up here. I wanted to make sure I held the hose because I didn't want it to roll you right up in it. <laughs> All right, so we are going to roll on out of here. And uh, we'll go to the next uh, field there where they're hauling manure. We've got to fill some stuff up with fuel up there as well. Well, now we are filling up the... Manure equipment, we've got the 8120 on the frack tank, and then the boys are out spreading manure right now with the 9410 and the 9320. I just filled Mike up. I've got to fill Nate up yet. This isn't something we would normally do. In other words, we wouldn't have a guy just running around fueling everybody. If I had this trailer ready last night, I would have left it in this area. The girls would have filled up with fuel with it last night. Then we would have left the trailer overnight. And these guys could have filled up uh, today with their equipment. So once we get these guys full of fuel, we are going to take this back to the farm, refill it, and I want to get death loaded into it as well i'm kind of curious to know how much that tank holds uh as far as uh what it holds for death fluid and i kind of want to know how much draw bar weight it's going to put on the truck because four or five hundred pounds is hardly anything and it seems to be pretty well balanced so they've got a hump of corn stalks right there. Mike plugged up with his injector. That injector doesn't have the staggered shanks on it. And it does get uh, plugged with corn fodder. This was this field here, uh, the corn was combined off this field, so there's a lot of trash on top of the ground. Uh, yeah, so they're going to try to go on a little bit of an angle to kind of divert themselves from getting into that problem. But we're going to have to get them corn stalks picked up there and scatter them about. 
so that they don't have any problem chisel plowing this. If they get into that, what they'll have to do is hook onto it with the chisel plow and try to uh, separate them. So this has got to be just about full. And it is right up to there. We'll let that kick off and then we will get Nate filled up after he loads with manure. And then we can get back to the shop and get something done here. fill him up with fuel while he's loading uh, the frack tank hasn't got a lot in it so we can kind of just let him sit right here while we put fuel into him the articulators are nice because you can fill on either side um, the other nice thing is is how long this hose is we can kind of stage hit two tractors that are a pretty good distance apart so we'll go ahead and get him full and uh and we'll get out of here all right we are rolling out of here i'm gonna roll this back across the scale i'm curious to know how much fuel we went through we probably pumped three or four hundred gallons anyways and um yeah so well we are just getting back to the farm we're gonna pull on to the scale quick and um, try to do some quick math as to how many gallons are still on the trailer or in the trailer tank rather again it would be handy if the tank had a gauge on it of some kind another thing that would be handy is just a gallon reader on uh, on the pump you could do the math that way if you knew you were full you'd be able to uh, figure it out so we are 13.9 now so we I don't know what we were before because I can't remember but I think we were I think we grossed like 18 so i'll have to do the math when i go to edit this video so we'll uh fill this up and we'll join back up with you all right so we have this fuel trailer inside and we are now getting diesel exhaust fluid in these totes, uh, when we go through the winter, I just get it 55 gallon drums, but now we're into the busier season. And uh, we've got this tote, I think it holds 275 gallons or something like that. Yeah, 275 gallons. So I've got an electric pump here that's in this box that I picked up on ebay the other day it's a fill right diesel exhaust fluid pump it's 115 volt and we'll use that on this container and we'll pump uh diesel exhaust fluid over into the container that's on the trailer here 
and uh, we'll see how much that holds. I don't know offhand, I don't know if that's 120 or 30 gallons. So let's go ahead and get this opened up here. Well, we've got this out of the box and we've got it set up on the tote. Uh, this is a fill right pump system, 120 volt. The pump that is on the trailer here is the same thing, fill right uh, pump as well. This is eight gallons a minute and I think the, yeah, same thing, eight, eight gallons a minute roughly. That's the 12 volt. This is 120 volt. The only thing that this did not come with is the actual drum coupler. So this is the straw that goes, or the tote coupler. This is the straw that goes down inside the tank. And there's a coupler that will twist lock onto this unit here. Then there's a, like a handle lever that'll push this apparatus down and then it'll suck the fluid up through uh, this straw so we've got the hose just setting down inside the tote so we'll go ahead and turn this on this uh, pump kit came with an automatic shutoff nozzle so it is oh it's pumping a little heavy there so there's a strainer uh, down inside this tank here and it acts as though it is pumping too much for that strainer we might have to take that strainer out all right so we've got this pumping now we actually had to pull the strainer out i couldn't get the strainer out of the fill port on this side however i was able to get the strainer out on that side there. So you excited now that we have an electric pump for our diesel exhaust fluid? No more hand pump. So again, we're not sure what that tank holds. This tote had about 240 or so gallons in it. However, this straw, this hose here doesn't go all the way down in the bottom. So, I guess I could lay the pump up on the side there. We do have to get the coupler for that straw. We don't want to leave that tank open. If we end up getting contaminants in the diesel exhaust fluid, that's going to be bad, right? Yeah. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get that tank filled, and then uh, Alex is going to pull the tractor in and change your oil on it, huh? Sarah's got to go spread manure. Andrew's spread manure. Right? Yeah. All right. So we'll get this filled. Get this tank out of this trailer out of here. Well, we've got the tank. The diesel exhaust fluid tank on the trailer is full. We started at about 240 gallons. We're down to 100. So quick math. That's like 296 gallons of death that tank holds. No. <laughs> About 140 ish gallons is what that tank there holds. It holds more than we need, but I wanted to fill it to get a good measurement of it. So we're going to go ahead and pull this trailer out of the shop. We're going to have to hold off on using this tote the way it is until I can get the proper drum attachment here to hook up to that bung there um, I'm probably gonna have to hide this because I got a couple guys that are just gonna want to just they're just gonna be so excited to use it that um, they're gonna insist on getting it out so they'll just have to get deaf off of that tank we've got what is there Two, four silage trucks that take it, a couple tractors, telehandler, backhoe, payloader. Yeah, we've got enough equipment that takes this diesel exhaust fluid now that, um, yeah, 
Well, I better get this out of the way and uh, let you pull your tractor in, right? Well, we'll just roll this across the scale and get a total weight of what this weighs, full of fuel and full of diesel exhaust fluid. And we've also got several pails of oils and coolant and whatever in that toolbox I do have a little bit of fuel in the tank that's on the truck so we weigh a total of 19,850 pounds so I'm just going to roll off the scale with the truck and we'll get just the weight of the trailer uh, full of fuel and diesel exhaust fluid minus the truck again I have fuel in the tank on this truck. The truck weighed 7,500 pounds before we had anything in it. And let me get this unhooked and we'll see what we have for a complete weight. All right, for those of you that care, <laughs> we are unhooked. So it's just the trailer on the scale. We weigh 11,900 and 40 pounds it weighed 10,700 before I took it off of the bumper so it had about 1200 pounds of uh, tongue weight on the ball hitch completely full of uh, fluids so we're gonna go ahead and get on a couple of other projects and that is gonna do it uh, for this video I was curious to know how much tongue weight it was putting on the truck um, how much gross weight everything was with fuel and diesel exhaust fluid uh, loaded what I would like to do to this trailer is move this fill spout over to one side or the other I would like to put a 12 volt uh, pump on here as well so that if we run into a problem with the gas driven pump that's there i mean we could have a broken recoil we could have a blown hose we could have any of a number of things that is going to keep us from being able to get fuel out of this tank when we need it another thing i would also like to do is put some kind of a sight tube on this tank I don't know as if I'd put it in the back because what I'd like to do is put some sides on here and put my leaf blower in here so that we can carry the leaf blower uh, on here as well. There's too much stuff in the cabinet in order to, to get it to fit in the cabinet. So I'm thinking maybe a sight gauge uh, just drill a hole here or put it on the outside or somewhere somewhere where it's not going to get broken off of the uh, trailer here so that's going to do her folks I want to thank everybody for watching and we will catch you at the next video